In this third video of Hobby Robbie, you will see me killing pre-molded sea belts, filing my nails and my fingers, and sugarcoating a driver's seat. And with all of that, I will still be trying to build a scale model Formula One car. You pass yourself a plastic kid. I'm a scale model car. You don't know what to do with it. But who will help you find Hi there you scale model kid lovers and welcome in my super tiny shed. I am sorry that it took me a million years to make this third vlog and I had a reason for that because I have been visiting the very soaking wet Belgian Grand Prix, the very orange Dutch Grand Prix and I had a party for my 50th birthday. But finally it's here and it's all about texturing the driver's seat. So sit back and relax and while you're here just hit the subscribe button below the video. Tap that notification bell too to get notifications of new vlogs. And if you really, really like this video, give it a thumbs up. Enjoy! Hobby Robbie! Unfortunately seats in old Tamiya kits come with pre-molded belts. Most modelers find them an annoyance because they are hard to detail and paint and never look crisp. Tamiya listened and does not do this anymore. So the seat belts had to go out and my Dremel was happy to assist me. Sanding sponges are handy for this kind of narrow and curved surfaces. With a rough sanding sponge, in this case 180 grit, I try to get rid of the last remains of the seat belts. I sand from coarse to fine and end with 600 grit. Diamond needle files help me to deepen the slots for the seat belts. The seat in the Lotus looks quite cozy in this red velvety skin. So let's try to replicate that. Ruby, Ruby. To imitate the soft texture of Alcantara leather on scale, I use glass micro balloons. I will attach those balloons with PVA glue. Micro balloons are actually a filler that is used for epoxy putty. Some people use flour to do this, but I don't like using organic products on my models. Be very careful with this stuff. These microscopically small glass balls are hollow and go airborne very easily. Always use a respirator, goggles, gloves and use the balloons very gently. To fix the micro balloons to the interior parts and also to have a good base for the coming paint layers, I use Tamiya Surface Primer. You have to mix this yourself with thinner and for that I use Tamiya Lacquer Thinner Retarder Type. You know, the bottle with the orange cap. I will spray the seat in a vibrant flat red, Tamiya's XF7. Since this is an acrylic based paint, I dilute it with X20A thinner of the same brand. I also use about the same mixing ratio as with the lacquer based primer, 50-50%. When you've added the thinner to the paint in the spray gun, you can mix it by using an old brush. Red is quite a nasty color because its covering capabilities are not that good. In fact, it's better to use pink primer or add a drop of red paint to your white primer. I could have done that, but I think I was lazy. Or dumb. Or both. <laughs> so I needed quite some layers to get good coverage. I think about four or five. I lost count really. The seat looks rather flat now, so I wanted to add some highlights to it using this Vallejo acrylic paint. This bottle has been a shelf queen for quite a while, so its paint is rather demixed. These agitated balls can help out. They are made of glass and about 1 cm in size. Remove the spout from the bottle and drop a ball in. And then shake it until you make it mixed. 
A drop of Vallejo, Off-White and Carmine Red are mixed until I think it suits as a highlight. May I present to you my secret weapon? Here is the Army Painter Masterclass Miniature Dry Brush. It is a thick bristle with short hairs. When you dip the brush in the paint, make sure you remove almost all of it on a kitchen towel. You really need very little paint. Then gently brush over the edges of the part you want to highlight. I really like how this top comes alive. I also apply this technique on the seat. Dry brushing is used very little in automotive modeling, while in armor modeling it is commonplace. Let me know in the comments if you ever used this method before. The seat and tub are upholstered with red alcantara, which has a patchy look. To imitate that I mix Tamiya XF7 and Tamiya XF1 in a slightly darker red. I kept the chair close for reference and kept on mixing until it looked good. Then the application. I just started scribbling freehand shapes with my brush. As you can see I do not use a very small brush. This is an O size Raphael Kolinsky brush which is kinda big. But it has a nice sharp tip. And because of the size you can load more paint into your brush and work for longer time spans. This is how the seat looks after half an hour of stippling. I think it's pretty convincing. The tub needed such a treatment too to match the seat. Some shadow lines were accentuated with the mixed dark red paint. Robbie, Robbie. The original seat has a very small leather label sewn onto it probably provided with the name of the driver as these chairs are tailor made. Is Hobby Robbie turning away for such tiny details? Of course not! Evergreen plastic is ideal for just about everything in modeling, so I cut myself a small strip that I left on this leftover styrene sheet. I used Vallejo Panzerase's paint, not for any particular reason other than the color. The dark brown is set up in some layers. I used light mud for the stitching. I forgot to press the record button the first time so you might not believe I actually painted that. But I had to make some corrections so you can still see my painstaking work. Then I cut it loose from the styrene sheet but I forgot to varnish it. Painting such a small piece of plastic is uh... A challenge to say the least. Oh, it's so, so tiny. It just sticks to my brush. <laughs> Come on! <Huh? laughs> now it's standing upright. After that, a precision mounting job was to be done. Come on, stick! What can it be? You're just a cute little piece of plastic. Uh -huh. A bit of touching up with the red paint and the seat was ready. I thought, because I started milling it to pieces once again with my Dremel. Via a helping fellow modeler, thank you Tim, I received extra photos that revealed slots in the horizontal part of the seat. So these had to be made, because that's where the horizontal seat belts pass through. Yeah, and holding a part is not always easy. After the milling, I used my bare metal foil panel scriber to open the slots. Then I did some filing with a round diamond needle file and a bit of scraping. The slots were ready and checked if the seat belts would fit through them. To frame the slots as in the original seat, I used this nifty Hungarian instrument. A round punch and die from RP tools. Quite an expensive tool, it sets you back for about 75 euros. You stick a piece of styrene sheet between the lids, tighten the knobs, slide a punch into the correct hole, protect the punch with a piece of masking tape and then hammer it down. After I punched two holes, I connected them by using my knife to create a slot. Then I cut it loose and started to finish it off. Which is of course the easiest thing to do. Yeah right. 
And of course, no parts are shot away during the process. <laughs> With all the smoothing tools I could find, I made this part a bit more slick. Of course, I'm very careful while brushing it off. Oh! I did a test fit and made a second one. After gluing them on the seat, I used Vallejo Black Grey to paint them. Robbie. Another detail was discovered on the cockpit interior pictures. A black knob! It had to be made, since it is so present. Evergreen to the rescue, this time with rods. I filed a piece of rod with my diamond files to, yes it's true, a diamond shaped profile. Then I marked the top of the diamond shape to be made slimmer with my knife. A bit of a dangerous job that can cost you a finger cut. Don't try this at home people. After some smoothing I took my knife and marked a hole in the middle to use as a dent for my drill to put in. With a 0.5 proxon drill I made a hole. Then a small piece of evergreen rod of the same diameter was cut off and fit into that hole. Tamiya extra thin cement mated both parts together. I shortened the rod with the Tamiya side cutter because the cut is very straight and doesn't squeeze off the plastic. Some smoothing was done with sanding sponges before a test fit was carried out. What a cutie! On the side of the tub I marked the exact position of the knob. I dipped the knob in CA glue, but that was obviously a bit too much. A cotton swab sucked up excess glue and the knob was cemented in place. Vallejo black grey was used again, as I did with the slot trim. I highlighted the knob with Vallejo light grey. As if I did not do enough in reverse order, I noticed the back of the tub was not upholstered with Alcantara, but just plain carbon fiber. So I sanded the micro balloons off using a respirator and painted the parts of the tub that will be visible in Tamiya Dark Iron. After the carbon decals were applied, I varnished them with Mr. Color GX Flat Super Smooth Clear. And man, that stuff dries ultra fast. Really straight behind your brush stroke. But I like how flat it looks and remember, these parts are very hard to be seen. I hope you liked the vlog and it gave you some insights in how to detail and texture a driver's seat. I would kindly ask you to consider supporting me via Patreon, you would really help me with that. You can also support me via PayPal, there is a direct PayPal link, it's all in the description below the video. And for now, the end shots of the driver's seat, but before that, don't be sorry. Build a car model kit and watch Hobby Robbie! 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 Hobby Robbie!